Good morning, 5.07. Uh, I'm in the car and probably you already know where I'm at. Um, and if you don't know where I'm at, uh, you need to look back at some posts and figure it out. I'll give you a hint, it's work, but it's not the job that pays me in money. Um, I made a post yesterday that talked about, um, it was a share from Cameron Haynes, uh, which was um, Obsession is Lonely. And, and I, you know, I said that I was going to kind of touch on that once I digested it, uh, slept on it, woke up in my prep for this morning. Um, I kind of felt like I was ready to talk. Um, I'm going to also post in the comments a link to a video by C.T. Fletcher on obsession. Um, by no means am I trying to say I'm, I am neck and neck with that guy on, obs on obsession, but that is someone that I look to and I value his example of what it means to be obsessed with something and when I started trying to get healthy for real um, you know prepping for my weight loss surgery and 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 after um, you know a lot of his videos including this obsession one was the one that really I uh, glommed on to um, to be successful with so anyway obsession is lonely um, I feel like I have a lot of peers that are on similar journeys as I am. Uh, a couple of them have told me that what I'm doing is inspiring them and I appreciate that. Um, a couple of them are doing it on their own um, and I you know, appreciate that as well. Um, but each journey is, is different and, and personal to that person. Um, you have people who um, move to feel good. You have people that move to be a part of the group um, you have a combination of the two. I mean, you've got people with a variety of reasons and motivations and levels of intensity. Um, my level is not higher or lower or anything when it comes to those people. Um, but the feeling that is involved with my, uh, you know, my need to, to do what I do. Sorry, I'm messing with the camera. It's a glare. All these are going to be raw. I told you that from the start. But the obsession I have with what I'm doing right now is on a level to where, um, it, it dictates a lot. Um, it tells me what to do. Um, and, and there's feeling behind it. Um, for example, it's after 5.00 AM. I started, I started getting up and getting ready to go to the gym at 4.15. Um, it's slow in the morning for me. So, you know, we're just getting here and, um, you know, I, I have, mornings where I wake up early and the truth of why I wake up early is because I wake up wondering should I be going in there and working I don't hurt I, I should be doing something you know the goal of being the stronger healthier me than before um, it wakes me up at night um, another more recent example of this is uh, so I get body scans at the gym done every every month um, not only does it look at weight, it looks at, you know, how much muscle I'm gaining on every limb, um, what my abdominal circumference looks like, what, uh, just all kinds of stuff. Um, and, it, and it also tracks fat gain and loss. Um, you know, my most recent, all my scans up until the most recent one have been trending with the, the fat percentage dropping, um, the lean muscle increasing. Um, this scan the muscle increased, but I had about a five to six pound fat increase, um, which for someone who made a promise that he wasn't going back to a 500 pound life, uh, I'm walking in the wrong direction. And, you know, outside to anyone who, who knew about this, um, I was pretty cool about it and just said, you know, change has to be made. Um, inside I was ripping myself apart, um, not ripping myself apart and being depressed and, you know, uh, I might as well just quit or whatever. No, it was just, you're doing wrong. Fix it, fix it now. That, that's, that is the, the two words that rang through my head from the moment I saw I had a gain even to today, fix it, fix it now. You have no time to be gaining weight. You have no time to be walking unhealthy. Um, and just because obsession is there doesn't mean there's, there's chances to, to slip up. But, you know, we slipped up with the eating. I'll own it. But what are we going to do about it? 
So, you know, the first thing I told my wife, my, my, my lunch every day used to be sandwich, a bag of chips that weren't too bad, and whatever. I said it's gone. Lean protein, you know, a decent carb that, that I agree with, and, and maybe a little veggie or, or some kind of supplemental thing there. Immediately switched that. Second thing that, that I found um, with this month is that I feel like to a degree, um, I was living out Rocky Three. Uh, if you don't know Rocky Three, he's the champion in the beginning. Um, he lives in luxury, he lives in comfort, um, and he slows down with his training. Mr. T beats the hell out of him, and then he, uh, you know, goes back to what got him to the dance, training harder, changing things up, and he whooped Mr. T's ass. Simple as that. Um, that's what needed to happen. My, I see my five pound gain, which may not be a big deal to some people, but to me, it's huge. Mr. T beat me. Clubber Lang did his work. Now it's time to get back at it. It's time to lose that and then some. So things have to change. That's why this morning, that's why in the mornings I've switched to the mornings, the evenings, while I enjoy my evening workouts, I get to see friends. I get to see people that I genuinely enjoy. Um, you know, seeing these people and having conversations and burning minutes on that um, takes away from the goal. So for a time, for a period of time, uh, we need to refocus. So that's why I'm back here in the morning. Um, in the morning, there are people here. I'm looking at one of them right now. True savages. I, there's no one in here who is just in here to move around, to feel good about themselves. There's no one in here that that's here to be distracting, um, that needs the spotlight. Anyone who's coming at five o'clock or earlier to the gym has a mission, has a goal. And that's what I needed to be around right now. I need to refocus and get back to what I'm doing. Then there's the conversations of, of what we're doing that leads to obsession being lonely. Um, you know, I feel like I do have a very tight circle of people that I could lay out kind of how I'm feeling and they'll get it and they get it and, and they'll understand it. Um, I've got some good brothers in Baltimore who are jujitsu practitioners who I truly believe if I sat down for some sushi and explained everything I'm going through, they would go, yep, that's me with jujitsu. Uh, you know, I've got friends here in Hagerstown who, uh, you know, at one point... <laughs> I could outwalk them and, and with my goals changing and them being hungry, these guys put me to shame and I guarantee that if I talk to them and they see this video about obsession, they, they'll get it. Um, they get it in their own way, but they get it. Um, it's lonely. You know, I, I have conversations with people who, who aren't doing what I'm trying to do and kind of explain it and, and while they do a very nice job of listening and being supportive, you know when someone gets you, you see it. It's like a twinkle in their eye. Um, and then you, you know when people are pretending and patronizing. And the one thing about an obsession and, and the loneliness of it is that very few people get it. Very few people will do things on the level that you do when you're obsessed. And as an obsession, it, it, it's something I think about every single moment. There's not, there's not a moment where I don't look at something and think about how is this benefiting your health? I could be at work working with my students and I'll look over at something and go, how is this benefiting your health? How are you becoming better? How are you getting to your goal? A lot of people put their job and career as their like number one thing to be good at. I'm good at my job and career because I'm good at being healthy. I feel good. I can do things. That's my number one. It would be very, it'd be a very interesting conversation if someone told me you could either be a teacher or you could be healthy and you could, you could go to the gym and do everything you're doing. It'd be a very interesting conversation with a very life changing end game. But I'm obsessed, uh, you know, my money. And I know my buddy, Matt Sanchez, when he sees this, he's going to laugh because he knows for sure. I used to be the guy that dumped loads of money on video games. Now, don't get me wrong. I do still spend a little bit, but I used, it used to be everything because that was what I was obsessed with. It was, it was obsessed with just face pleasure. And I know that people are going to laugh at that, get your jokes in, but that's what video games are. It's just something in my face 
to entertain, you know what I mean? It may not necessarily go anywhere. I think it kind of wakes my brain up when I play in the morning, but, but that's besides the point. I dump money into supplements, into workout gear, into opportunities. A lot of it. A whole lot of it. Um, everything I think about is that. Everything. It's... And with Cam Haynes posting that yesterday, I got very emotional about it because at the end of the day, when this obsession is here and, and when it calls and when I perform, it's only me. At the end of the day, I could tell you my results and I'm the only one tasting that. I'm the only one living that. I'm the only one suffering for that. And it's a choice to suffer. It's just me. And while people benefit from the fruits of my labor, you know, when it's time to walk through the hailstorm, I'm the one getting peppered by choice. And that makes this experience lonely because no one's going to get it, no one's going to understand it. Quick little story, and I'm going to wrap this video up. After my, uh, after my weight loss surgery, before my weight loss surgery, I told my wife I was going to be on my feet doing something within an hour after waking up, which medically is probably not safe uh, considering an anesthesia and all that other stuff. Um, but I told her, I said I would because the months leading up to that surgery, I didn't just lose weight just to qualify. I started working out, gaining muscle because no one was going to take care of me and help me move my body when it was time. So sure enough, about 35, 40 minutes after waking up, I got up out of that bed and went to the bathroom. Um, may or may not have been a, quite a pretty sight, but I was up. And, and I remember when my wife came, I, I looked at the door and I said, I told you I'd be up. The, an hour or so after that, I was, I was asked, did, you, did I want to walk? Because part of this whole recovery process is you have to walk. You have to be able to, to be mobile. And I went, yep, let's go do it. Uh, and I walked about 25 laps around the uh, nurse's station on purpose. When I came to the hospital, part of my bag of things to have involved my headphones because I had planned to not only walk to live, I planned to outwalk everybody and to show everyone that I meant business. I was hooked then at 400 and... 48 pounds up about that I was hooked then so you have to understand with time with success with seeing lots of success and not just success in losing weight that's part of the surgery's design I mean I'm gaining muscle like being strong being able all that did was grow the monster that is my obsession and that is why it hit the heart of the multiple me's and we'll talk about the multiple me's in another post. It hit all of their hearts. When I saw those three words, obsession is lonely.